sectors. Information Minister presents scorecards to Federal Executive Council. Plus, correspondent takes a look at the pronouncement by the Presidential Tax Force on COVID-19 for a safe reopening of schools for exiting pupils and students. Good afternoon. This is Panorama reaching you live from the NTA Nugu Network Center. I am Chinenye Ngoye. billion naira has been approved by the federal government towards enhancing the provision of infrastructure in critical economic sectors for sustainable growth and development of the country. The approval was granted by the Federal Executive Council, which held its 14th meeting virtual in the year 2020. President Muhammad Buhari presided over the meeting, which was also the fifth to be held virtually. State House correspondent Adamu Sambu has details. Out of the nearly 20 billion naira approved for the provision of infrastructure across Nigeria, 4.6 billion is to be utilized by the FCT administration for the construction of Yaba Gundi Road in Abaji Area Council. This road is intended to open up the rural community, which is very agrarian and also with a lot of water resources. As a matter of fact, it's the area where we have the FCT Fishing Festival. 2.1 billion naira is also to be expended towards upgrading additional 8.4 kilometer staff quarter roads network in Abaji Township of the FCT. Still on the provision of roads network, Works and Housing Minister Babatunde Fashola secured approval of 3.07 billion naira revised estimated cost for the rehabilitation of Koton Karfe, Lokoja section of the Abuja Abaji Lokoja Highway. The second road is the Cham Numan section of the Gumbe to Yula uh, Highway. Again, the revision of the cost is by 7.6. 607 billion. This is to cover the cost of replacing about 11 kilometers of what we call black cotton soil. This is very bad soil on the side near Savannah. That soil always cakes when it is dry season. It gets mushy when it is wet season because it's clay soil. So the contractor has to remove all of that soil over 11 kilometers and replace it with better soil. The council also approved 2.27 billion naira revised estimated total cost for the extension and asphalt overlay on the runway of the Murtala Muhammad International Airport, Lagos. This central taxiway, taxiway Bravo, it's uh, very critical to the operations of Lagos. It improves the efficiency and safety of that particular airport. It has been abandoned for the last uh, 16 years. And in our own uh, efforts to ensure that all projects are completed for the benefit of the country, its future and its fortune, in the wisdom of the council, we have approved that project. And God willing, next year this time, that project will be delivered. Long cut irrigation project in Plateau State also received an approval of 634 million naira for its rehabilitation and additional construction works. The project comprises rehabilitation of 100 hectares of an existing pilot irrigation scheme and then expansion of that irrigation scheme by additional 500 hectares. It also includes the construction of existing damage water control and conveyor structures preparation of field and fish ponds and provision of adequate water for irrigation of the fields. The irrigation project, the minister said, is in furtherance of the present administration's commitment towards achieving food sufficiency and security. And in the coming weeks, he explained, more similar projects will be unveiled as part of the National Irrigation and Drainage Program 2016 to 2030, aimed at increasing the total irrigable land in Nigeria to 500,000 hectares. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News. 
42 million jobs will be created by the Federal Ministry of Information and Culture within the next three years in furtherance of genuine efforts by the President Mohamed Buhari administration to lift 100 million Nigerians out of poverty. The minister in charge, Lai Mohamed, disclosed this while briefing journalists shortly after giving account of his stewardship to the Federal Executive Council. Again, State House correspondent Adamu Sambu reports that the Attorney General of the Federation and Minister of Justice, Abu Bakr Malami, also presented the Ministerial Performance Report. The presentation by Information and Culture Minister Laya Muhammad to the Council centered on the various presidential mandate areas, including the execution of proactive media strategy to communicate policies and achievements of government, promotion of tourism, as well as positive Nigerian brand through arts and entertainment. Job creation, he said, is at the core of his engagement with the members considering the negative impact of COVID-19 on the economy. The number one job creator under the Ministry of Information and Culture is the digital switchover in broadcasting, which is set to create one million jobs in the next three years through the manufacturing of set-top boxes and TV sets, TV and film production, as well as TV and online advertising and data, among others. Of course, the DSO will also fetch $100 million from the collection of TV licenses and digital access fees, as well as a $1 billion from the sale of the spectrum that will be vacated once the analog to digital migration has been completed. The broadcast and advertising industries, the minister explained, are being reformed towards not only boosting their strength, but also creating jobs and propelling revolutionary advantages in the promotion of entrepreneurship. As for the advertising sector, bringing Nigeria's TV advertisement market to what it should be, which is three times its current size, could result in additional $200 to $400 million revenue to the industry in addition to creating thousands of jobs. Then, of course, the cultural industries centers, which are scattered all over the country, are capable of creating half a million jobs within the next three years, just as we can have about 100,000 jobs from the restoration of our museums. The presentation by the Minister of Justice, Abubakar Malami, touched on, amongst others, speedy trial of high-profile corruption cases, decongestion of correctional services, illicit assets recovery, and passage of executive bills. The ministry has succeeded in prosecuting 500 cases on terrorism, 10 cases on securities and exchange commission-related offenses, 10 cases on hostage-taking and kidnapping. In relation to recovery of looted assets, we have succeeded in recovering $311 million from U.S. and New Island of Jersey. We are pursuing the recovery of $62 billion from IOCs relating to claims over profit sharing contract. We are pursuing additional $6.3 million of loot from Republic of Northern Ireland, and uh, we are making progress in the recovery of that amount. In relation to OPL 245, the Malabu's case, we have succeeded in recovering $72 million, part of the $1 billion allegedly looted in relation to OPL 245. The minister used the opportunity to put the record straight that the federal government is not shielding from prosecution soldiers allegedly involved in the Wadume kidnap kingpin case now before the court of law. What could be said to have happened, perhaps, is a delay for a limited time to allow the processes recognized and realized by law to be consummated as it relates to the prosecution of the military and not by any means in any way intended to accord them protection or not to present them before the court. The law, he said, provides that the armed forces are at liberty to either charge its personnel suspected to have committed an offense before a court martial or hand them over for trial after a consummation of the in-house processes. From the State House, Adamu Sambu, NTA News.
Petroleum Products Pricing Regulatory Agency, PPPRA, has announced a new petrol retail price band of 140 naira 80 kobo to 143 naira 80 kobo for oil marketers for the month of July 2020. A statement by the Executive Secretary, PPPRA, Abdul Kadri Saidu, says, after a review of prevailing market fundamentals in the month of June and marketers' realistic operating costs, the new pump price is advised. The statement also says X Depot for collection includes the statutory charges of bridging costs. It would be recalled that following the deregulation of the petroleum downstream subsector and the provision of the establishment of a monthly price band, all marketers are advised to operate within the indicative prices by the PPPRA. On the 11th of June 2020, the Senate confirmed 42 career ambassadors designate as requested by President Muhammadu Buhari. In furtherance of his resolve to strengthen Nigeria's missions abroad, President Muhammadu Buhari has again written the Senate requesting the confirmation of 42 ambassadors. Ignatius Unkwo reports. Wednesday's plenary took off behind closed doors. One hour after, President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, read President Muhammadu Buhari's request for confirmation of appointments. Suleiman Sani from the Federal Capital Territory as career ambassador designate and 41 others as non career ambassadors designate. While using this opportunity to express my sincere appreciation to the distinguished Senate for the confirmation of career ambassadors earlier forwarded, it is my hope that this request will also receive your usual expeditious consideration. While thanking the President for sending the name of the career one, we want to say that uh, for the FCT, that the non career has not been uh, uh, submitted. Senate adopted Senator Abba Moro's motion urging security agencies to investigate and prosecute perpetrators of the attacks on Echori and Itaba communities in Benue State. The legislators, through a motion by Senator Ifan Yuba, observed the 2020 International Day of Parliament as it called for stock taken by Nigerian legislators at all levels. Parliaments all over the world are needed more than ever to put in place legislation to respond to the health and economic crisis occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic. And of course, um, ensuring that we always, we always uh, legislate on good governance. Senator Jibrin Issa drew the attention of the Senate to the urgent need for the completion and takeoff of the federal government's aquaculture project at Ada Kogi State. It resolved to invite the Minister of Finance and all anti-corruption agencies to brief it on illicit financial flows. Senator Gershon Bassi moved the motion, which also converged tax amnesty for voluntary repatriation of funds. The Senate has received the report of its Committee on Judiciary, Human Rights and Legal Matters on the Sexual Harassment Bill. It also received the reports of its Committee on Tertiary Education and Ted Fund on the establishment of some tertiary institutions. The National Assembly Joint Committee on Media and Publicity has called on the federal government to suspend the implementation of the 774,000 Public Works Program. The Chairman Senate Committee on Media and Public Affairs, Senator Ajibola Basiru, stated this when he briefed National Assembly correspondents on Senate's position on the program. Implementation of the 774,000 Public Works to be put on hold until implementation modalities is explained to the National Assembly. He explained that the National Assembly has been in support of the program right from inception. Senate has adjourned plenary to Tuesday, the 7th of July, 2020. From the National Assembly, Ignatius Nkwo, NTA News. to COVID-19 update. The latest COVID-19 case update from the Nigerian Center for Disease Control shows that Nigeria has recorded 790 new cases of COVID-19. This number was recorded from 20 states under the FCT. Delta is on top of the COVID-19 chart with 166 cases. Lagos has 120 cases, FCT 65, Enugu 66, Edo 60, Ogun 43, Kano 41, Kaduna 39, 
Ondo 33 cases. Others are Rivers 32, Bayelsa 29, Katsina 21, Imo 20, Kwara 18, Oyo 11, Abia 10, Benue 6, and Gumbe 4. While Yobe, Bauchi, and Kebi states has two cases each, bringing the total number of COVID-19 cases in Nigeria to 26,484, with 10,152 discharged and 603 deaths. The level of compliance with COVID-19 safety measures is very low, as high volume of vehicular movement in and out of Enugu State was recorded after reopening of interstate boundaries. Comfort IM visited Enugu Anambra and Enugu Abakiliki boundaries and now reports. The morning of July 1, 2020, about 7 o'clock in the morning on arrival at the Enugu Anambra boundaries, of course you can see well, free flow of a vehicle and pedestrian movement without restriction orders. At Enugu Onita Expressway, the traffic congestion at the road was heavy as travelers from both the northern and southern parts of the country who were unable to travel before now due to the lockdown took advantage of the reopening to travel. It was also observed that level of compliance on COVID-19 protocols is very low among the road users. The trip also took the crew to the Enugu Ebony boundaries. This is the Ebony Enugu boundaries. The road also links uh, other neighboring states like Cross River and Abia State. The picture of what you can see here speaks volume on level of pedestrian and uh, vehicular movement. Expressing joy over the reopening of the boundaries, respondents commended the federal government for the intervention measures, reflecting on the past experience during the restriction orders on interstate travels. Earlier on arrival at various commercial motor parks in Enugu, drivers were set for business, though lament low patronage. But now they are opening the border for us. We are now a free person eh, to run the, uh, on the channel and go in and come back. The crew also captured some commuters from other cities who arrived in Enugu during the visit. I'm coming from Abuja to Enugu. The, the ban is okay because no stress on the road. I am waiting for the bus so I can go and meet my father. Where is your father? My father is at Mina. I'm going to Calabar. The tea share is 4,000 naira, as against um, 3,000. It is the expectations of all who spoke that uh, socio-economic activities no doubt will bounce back to life Why they call on the government to ensure enforcement and total compliance with the COVID-19 precautionary measures. <laughs> In Enugu Comfort, I am NT News. We'll take a short break here. Panorama continues in just a moment. Do stay. For staying on. A cross section of parents and students in Enugu State have commended the federal government's approval on reopening of schools across the country to allow students in exam classes sit for their examinations. Jude Abugu sought the views of some Enugu residents on this development and our reports. The news of the federal government's decision to allow students in exam classes to return to school in order to sit for their examinations was received with joy and enthusiasm by both parents and students in Enugu State. They described the decision made known to the public by the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 as a right step in the right direction in the federal government's gradual easing of restrictions and lockdown in the country. It was bad at some so I was expecting it. When I heard this this morning, I was very happy about it. Many the federal governments and all the state governments that will implement such a law given by the federal government. Yes, I think I actually support this for only those who are in SS classes and order to come first. Then gradually when things are set in place, the other classes can come in. The respondents, however, called on government and school proprietors across the country to ensure that adequate preventive measures against coronavirus are put in place in all schools in the country before the students return to write their exams. They have to obey the rules and the regulations, the guidelines given by the NCDC, like the provision of the water, the sanitizer, 
the face masks to enable them to protect themselves. Many of us cannot afford the money to buy face masks, so I will, I will be expecting our government to buy it for us. As at the time of filing this report, heads of education parastatus in Enugu State were in a crucial meeting brainstorming on ways to guarantee safe resumption of academic activities in line with the federal government's directive. In Enugu, Jude Abugu, NTA News. And with me in the studio to discuss the level of preparedness for safe reopening of schools is the Commissioner for Education in Enugu State, Professor Uchin Eze. Sir, it's good to have you join us on Panorama. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, the closure of educational institutions nationwide in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic was a difficult decision, though it was inevitable. So what was your reaction to the PTF on COVID-19's pronouncement of a safe reopening of schools for exiting pupils and students to take their exams? Well, while um, everybody would want the school to reopen, uh, it is really difficult because uh, it is important that um, we put everything in place to ensure that the children are safe and the teachers are safe and the operators of the schools are safe. So. Uh, while the decision is a welcome one, we are being very careful about the process of uh, reopening because we want to be sure that we have fitted all loose ends to ensure that uh, when these children come back to school, that they will be safe in school, the teachers will be safe in school. For instance, in any good state, in fact, uh, as the lockdown started, we know that one of the uh, deciding factors for reopening school at any time is that there has to be physical distancing in school. And that made the state governor to order the renovation of so many schools and the construction of new classroom blocks, especially at our basic education level because of the population we have there. In fact, if you look around the Enugu State currently, so many schools are being renovated because we need all the available spaces we can get. Uh, new classroom blocks are also being constructed where we have large population of uh, uh, pupils and students so that uh, we can achieve the physical uh, spacing. Um, as I said, we want to be sure that uh, when these children are back, to the classroom that they are going to be safe because uh, for them a class that uh, used to have 30 students or people before we cannot uh, allow 30 persons there because at least in the classroom from one desk to the other we should have two meter spaces in which case if we used to have 30 before we may be having uh, uh, 20 but in our standard uh, classroom who should be able to accommodate 20 students in there. So we want to achieve that uh, physical distancing. And we are making enough effort to see, because sensitization of stakeholders are critical in this. Parents, teachers, because the teachers are the ones that will handle these children in school. We want to be sure that this teacher know, has, has in, uh, that they have enough information which will help them to manage the children, because now, the most important thing is safety in school. So, uh, we are being very careful and we are working hard and fast. When uh, I know that uh, as soon as the, uh, as, as uh, is excellent, because he has other information available from experts, and uh, once uh, uh, he has uh, adequate information that this children will be safe in school, he will. Uh, align with the area, uh, but he will want to be sure that this children are okay, safe. Okay, sir. So now you're talking about safety. How do you ensure the adherence to these safety protocols? Well, uh, the truth is that uh, the NCDC uh, guidelines are clear for everybody. The first thing is uh, social and physical distancing. And that is why I'm now, uh, I talked about uh, uh, trying to ensure that uh, we, uh, because uh, His Excellency has spent so much money trying to renovate school, try to put up new ones, because we need every available uh, spaces. And also, uh, as you listen, the federal government, 
they are not talking about all the children coming back to school at the same time. It is about phase the reopening. So when we reopen, it is just going to be those in the examination classes that will come to school. And uh, we have uh, made adequate arrangement that whenever um, uh, the, uh, the schools are reopened, that we monitor to ensure that every school comply with the directive of physical distancing. Okay, so In fact, okay. every school matters. Okay. It doesn't matter whether it is a rural or a... Sorry, Prof. Okay. We'll leave it here for now. No Professor problem. Uchen Naize, thank you so much for your time. Okay. And sports is next. Our special report on sports focuses on Nigeria's 48-year-old first-year football league with Clement Oloren Toba as our guide. The Nigeria Professional Football League, MPFL, the highest level of the Nigerian Football League system for the Nigerian Club Football Championships, was founded in 1972 to compete with other soccer leagues around the world. Since the league commenced in Nigeria, it has proven to be a perfect platform through which Nigerian players have been able to showcase their talents and probably gain international recognition. At a time in 2012, the Nigeria Professional Football League was treated best in Africa as a result of their continental impact before they slugged back to ninth in year 2020. One issue that has been a major concern to the followers of the league is sponsorship. Equivalently, that is also the responsibility of NMC and uh, club owners. And I think, from what I know, they are making a lot of moves to see that they get more sponsors. The last time the league was televised was in the 2017-2018 season through the Nigerian Television Authority. After Supersport pulled out of the sponsorship of the league, what is the way forward? Those that are in charge of the uh, Nigerian Football League and the uh, Professional League must be able to, one, make sure when they talk to sponsors, they assure them of transparency and accountability. What should Nigerian soccer lovers anticipate after COVID-19? We have to still put medical uh, measures in place to see that uh, we keep safe. Now that the 2019-2020 of the Nigeria Professional Football League is finally over, which was determined by the point per game uh, system, PPG, it is expected that in the next season, the league management company will be able to come out better to make the league attractive. In Abuja, Clement Oloruntoba, NT News. And that is it on Panorama from the NTA Enugu Network Center. Thank you so much for being a part of it and enjoy the rest of our programs on the NTA. Good afternoon.